with Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Uh, just a moment. Walt, Walt, is that your blood pressure I hear bubbling, or are you calling from Niagara Falls? What's the big idea keeping me waiting like that? Well, the big idea is that it's a beautiful day, and I'm happy. When I'm happy, I whistle. And when I'm happy and whistling, I don't like to be interrupted. I'll remember that the next time you're unhappy, and you ask a favor from me. You can whistle then, too. Oh, the great, big, important police lieutenant wants a favor from poor little old Richard Diamond. I want you to go to a funeral. Yours? No, it's mine. <laughs> Say, I'll live to dance the Charleston on your grave, wise guy. Well, they're burying Bigfoot Grafton this afternoon. How do you know? How do I know? How do I know what? That it's Bigfoot Grafton they're tucking in. The way it read in my paper, the Harbor Patrol fished out a guy presumed to be Bigfoot Grafton, boy racketeer. We're satisfied with the identification. Huh? Fingerprints? Fingerprints. Look, the body was in the Hudson River for nearly a week. Oh. Then tell me, what makes you so sure the guy they're putting in the ground today is Grafton? Look, Diamond, you're beginning to exasperate me. Will you or won't you go with us to Bigfoot Grafton's funeral this afternoon? Why me? Maybe you can show the boys how to dig the grave. Oh, Walt, Walt, that's silly. I don't know a grave from a hole in the ground. So why me? Because you once told me about a little business matter you had with some of Grafton's gang out west. And because some of those same hoods may attend the funeral, and because if any of them do, you'll recognize them. And I can point them out to you. Say, you are a detective. Otis and I'll pick you up in about an hour. Goodbye, Diamond. Goodbye, Bright Eyes. Come on, come on, Billy. How many times have I got to tell you this is the only thing left to do? It's all wrong, Marge. I tell you, there's no need to call in a private eye. Well, hello, girl. Who are you? The name's on the door. Your diamond? Ah. Uh, you see something you don't like? Yeah, you. Oh, you'll never be lovely, be engaged, or get to use ponds with an attitude like that. It's a waste of time, Marge, a waste of time. Lay off it, Billy. I know what's right. We came a long way to see you, Diamond. All the way from West Frampton we came. We're ducklings. Well, first impressions are so deceiving. I almost thought you were girls. Now, look, there's a psychiatrist just down the hall who... Get I'm... this, Billy. The guy thinks we're nuts. Well, maybe you are a couple of ducks, and I'm the one who's crazy. Not ducks. Ducklings. Oh. Well, then if you have that kind of a problem, go to the Audubon Society. You never heard of the Long Island Ducklings? All we done was win the pennant last year. Pennant? Oh, baseball? Now it's coming. We're a girls' softball team. We got our own park out in West Frampton. I play third base. Who's on first? Me. Come on, let's get out here, Marge. We'll stay. We gotta find Lottie, and he's gotta help us. Lottie? Lottie Wyrachek, our second baseman. She's been missing almost a week now. We can't win without our second baseman. Oh, yes. I can see where it must leave quite a gap between first base and shortstop. We ain't gonna win the pennant again unless we get Lottie back, Diamond. We gotta have her. You're elected. Elected? I'm not even sure I accept the nomination. See? Let's go, Marge. You don't want the job, Diamond? Well, I've never looked for a missing second baseman before. I wouldn't know where to begin. A fine detective. Here, you, you begin by looking at her snapshot. Oh, no, no, girls. Really, I'm terribly busy right now. I've got to go to a funeral and help the police department look with it. Look at her picture. But I tell you, I... 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 I, I don't tell me this is... Lottie Wirechick. You mean a girl who looks like this wastes her nights playing second base? Yeah. Wastes, he says. Diamond, stop drooling. You take the job? Well, I, uh... Well, I'm, I'm, I'm tempted, yes. I'm, I'm very tempted. <clears throat> now, let's, uh... Let's get some answers first. I'll ask Billy. She's a roommate. All right. Now, think back, Billy, to a day or so before she disappeared. Uh, she seemed worried about anything? Nervous? Upset? No. Why, she even hit two home runs the very last night she played. She did, huh? Well... I wonder if... Oh, no, no, that isn't possible. The Dodgers do a lot of things, but they wouldn't kidnap people. You say she's been with the team two years? Yeah. 
Diamond, what sort of questions are these? Please, Lefty. It's my turn at bat. Now, Billy, what did she do before she became a second baseman? Who knows? You'll find her for us? For you? <laughs> oh, no. For me. They gave me a pass for the game that night with the Amagants at Amazon's, informed me how to get out to West Frampton the quickest way as the E-train flies, then exploded themselves out, leaving me with a snapshot of a second baseman who looked like Jane Russell, only more so. I wasn't able to dream too long because soon the door opened and I looked up to find the most beautiful gabardine suit I'd ever seen walking toward my desk on the frame of the ugliest hoodlum I'd ever seen. Hey, you diamond? To some people. To others, I'm Mr. Diamond. Oh, Diamond. Mr. Diamond. The late Mr. Diamond. Yeah, that's the one I like the best. All right, parrot puss. Who's been eating your crackers? All right, comic. I'm just a boy with a message. Well, spill it. You had visitors, huh? Yeah? Yeah. A couple of overgrown tomatoes. A couple of tomatoes that look more like they belong to the Russian infantry than to the human race. Well, you're not very much to look at yourself, ugly. Get on with the message. The message is lay off. Don't go looking for no missing girl. You don't wake up with no bullet holes where your eyes ought to be. Huh? That's the message. The whole message. No signature? You don't need no signature, friend. Goodbye, Mr. Diamond. Uh, just a minute, Repulsive. Yeah? I want to tell you about the last side of the mouth punk who brought me a message like this without a signature. Go on. Frighten me. Go on. He just stand back there, Diamond. Don't come no closer. I'll let you... Don't reach into that pocket, punk. Oh, my arm! Now, let me get it for you. Ah, a luger. And almost as ugly as you are. We won't be needing it for this game. My arm! My arm! Oh, there's your arm. Now, put it up with the other one and I'll knock your head off. A few seconds later, when I picked myself up off the floor, I looked around for my spar mate, but he'd taken his arms and gone home, leaving me with an eye which for weeks to come would have me lying to people about walking into a door. Yeah, a door wearing gabardine. Ha! How'd you get that shiner, Diamond? I walked into a door, Walt. A door with a fist at the end of it. Where is this cemetery? South Carolina? We'll be there soon. Bigfoot Grafton won't mind waiting a little longer. Assuming, Sergeant Otis, that it is Bigfoot Grafton they're planting. Oh, no, you're not going to start that again. I told you on the phone. We're satisfied with the identification. What identification? Laundry marks and Grafton shirt. Cleaning marks and Grafton suit. Go on. What do you mean, go on? Look, Walt, suppose you're wanted for murder. Two murder raps. You don't have a chance of beating and suppose that next to the mailman with the income tax refunds, you're the most looked-for guy in the country. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're going to say, Diamond. You think maybe Grafton finds a sucker with his same general build, shoots him in the spine, changes clothes with him, and then dumps him in the big bathtub. That's right, Walt. Well, us silly, confused, homicide cops figured that way, too. Until we checked up on what gave Grafton his nickname. His nickname? Bigfoot. Yeah. yeah. Fourteen and a half. We found his shoemaker. He verified the size. So? So it's possible that Grafton can find a guy that fits his general physique. It's even possible that the guy he finds not only is built the same way body-wise, but wears exactly size 14 and a half Brogans, too. Yeah, it's possible. But highly improbable. Yeah, maybe you're right at that. Well, on behalf of myself and all the other simple-minded fellas known as cops, thank you, Diamond, for saying what you just did. Thank you. There's the cemetery. It was just a simple little funeral. Except that the coffin cost maybe $10,000 more than mine will ever cost. And excluding the fact that there were enough flowers to make a couple of dozen floats for the turnip of roses parade. Yes, it was just a simple little funeral with maybe a thousand simple little mourners. Good conservative people like safe blowers, burglars, con men, petty thieves, and some not so petty. Big wheels, little wheels, chiselers, grifters, grafters, jip artists. Well, Diamond, you see anyone who used to run with Grafton's mom? No, not yet. Hey, now look. Now, what's he doing here? Oh. The parrot nose in the stylish gabardine suit. I've been admiring that suit. Gabardine, huh? Too bad a poor little gabardine had to go give up its life just so a mug like that could have a suit. 
Where are you going, Diamond? Who is that guy? He's a messenger boy. I'll be right back. I edged my way through the crowd toward him, hoping that in view of the solemnity of the occasion, none of the pickpockets among the mourners would make use of the opportunity to swipe my suspenders. Five yards away, he turned. He saw me and started to run. I put my head down like a sprinter and turned to follow. There's nothing like a merry chase in a merry place like a cemetery. And just when I thought I had him... Diamond! Diamond, what are you doing running into tombstones? Oh, well, I suddenly remembered it's been years since I had a collision with a tombstone. What were you chasing that guy with a fancy suit for? I wanted to find out who his tailor is. Look, uh, Otis got a good look at that twerp I was chasing. Tell him to go through Rogue's Gallery and try to identify him for me, huh? Yeah, but where are you going? Me? No, I think I'll go to a ball game. It was a good game as games go, fast and exciting, and my girls did themselves proud. Eight to three. Even though the girl who was playing second in place of the missing Lottie made three errors. After the game, I was in the corridor outside the dressing room talking to Billy, the first baseman. The one who didn't think I should have been hired to bird dog the missing girl. Look, Diamond, this is all for nothing. Lottie ain't missing. We never called on you. There's no case. Now, that's the same tune with a slightly different lyric and ugly in a gabardine suit sang to me. It's a good thing I'm stubborn. It's a bad thing, Diamond, for you. It's gonna maybe cost you your life. No. No! Don't! It happened that fast. By the time I turned around to see who did the shooting, he had disappeared in the crowd. Dirty heel. Diamond, what happened? I heard shooting. Stand back, everybody. Send for a doctor. Oh, my God. He grabbed me. I was on his team. Who, Billy? Who? I told him, Marge, called on you to find Lottie. Who, dear? They'll kill Lottie. They'll kill Lottie. Billy. Uh, uh, Billy. Diamond. Is she? Is she? If anyone asks you who's on first, the answer is no one. Before we continue with the adventures of Richard Diamond, private detective, here's your Rexall family druggist. I've discovered lately that a lot of people think they don't need to take any precautions against vitamin deficiency during the summer months. But the truth is, we're just as apt to be low on vitamins during the summer as any other season. Then you think people should continue right through the summer taking a vitamin supplement? Indeed I do, ma'am. And the one I recommend is Rexall Plenamins. Why exactly? Well, just two plenamin capsules a day give you more than your minimum daily requirement of every vitamin for which such requirements have been established, plus valuable liver concentrate and iron, plus other beneficial factors of the vitamin B complex. Say, with all that, they must be expensive. On the contrary, plenamins cost you only pennies per day. Ask for plenamins at any Rexall drugstore. And remember, you can depend on any drug product that bears the name... Rexall. And now back to tonight's adventure with Richard Diamond, private detective, starring Dick Powell. Diamond, this department isn't in operation so that you can find girls. I don't care how she looks in her baseball uniform. Oh, but this is business, Walt. I tell you, she's been kidnapped. Another girl on the team was just murdered. Another murder? Where? West Frampton. West who? Frampton, out on Long Island. City limits? No. Uh, That's the quickest case I ever marked closed. What do you want to waste my time with imported homicides for? Don't I have enough to do right here? Oh, but Walt... Don't butt me. They've been knocking each other off like flies this week. We're so jammed up, I got three sips that don't even have a place to lie down. Four, if you include Otis. Oh, just for that wise guy, I ain't talking. Oh, if I could only be sure of that. I mean, I ain't talking about the guy you played tag with in the cemetery. I found him in the picture book, all right, Diamond. It took me two hours. And just for making cracks at me, I ain't telling you his name. Whose name? Joe Gabardine's, that's whose. And I ain't telling you what else I found out about him in the picture book either. Why not? Because you think you're smarter than the whole police department put together. That's why not. Oh. 
And so if I go spill to you that this Joe Gabardine used to work as a gunsel for the late Bigfoot Grafton, you're going to right away say Bigfoot Grafton ain't that after all, and that I'm a dope. Walt, you hear that? The guy that threatened me if I went looking for Lottie Wire check, this Joe Gabardine, is one of Grafton's boys. Say, who told you? Was one of Grafton's boys. Grafton's dead. No, but maybe not. Maybe all these shenanigans are part of Grafton's plot to put some sucker in his coffin and stay undercover. Sure, sure. Maybe Lottie Wirecheck knew in some way or other that the guy they fished out of the river and buried today wasn't Grafton. Look, Walt, you got a... Uh, 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 Diamond, tell me. Uh, that name you said, the, the one that sounds like something spelled backwards. Wirecheck? That's funny. What's funny? That's the same name as this name's in the file missing person sent over. Only this one's name is Lottie... Why, Richek? So's this one, you dope. You mean there's two dames with a name like that? Yeah, just like there are two heads on a sergeant named Otis Loveloon. Now, listen here. Who reported I... her missing? Just for being a fresh guy, I ain't gonna tell you. You ain't gonna tell him what? That it says here on the file card that this doctor reported her missing. Who said anything about a doctor? Huh? You sick, Otis? You need a doctor? I ain't sick. Besides, he ain't that kind of doctor. He's a dentist. Who's a dentist? This Dr. Alman, Dr. Percy Alman, 223 Park Avenue. So? What do you mean, so? What about him? What do you mean, what about him? Well, you brought him into the conversation, Dr. Percy Alman. You said 223 Park Avenue. What made you mention him if you don't have anything to say about him? He's the guy who reported this laddie watchamacheck missing, you dope. Gee, Diamond, are you dumb? <laughs> Dr. Percy Alvin's home for decrepit teeth at 223 Park Avenue was a fancy schmancy establishment where bad little molars and becuspids went in for punishment. I could tell even before I met Alman that he was the kind of drill artist who assured the customers there'd be no pain. No pain at all, and there usually wasn't. Until the customers got their bills. The office was a ground floor professional suite that opened directly on the street, and when I pushed open the door and went in... This kind of nice middle-aged guy greeted me with... Yes? I'm uh, looking for Dr. Alman. I'm Dr. Alman, but it's after my office hours, young man, unless it's an emergency. Well, it's, uh, it's about Lottie. Lottie Wirecheck. Lottie? You're from the police. You found her. Well, not yet, no. And I'm not from the police. Not... Who are you? My name is Diamond. I'm a private investigator. Oh. <laughs> you gave me quite a turn for a moment. Well, I'm sorry. Doctor, I'd like you to tell me a few things. What sort of things? Lottie Wirecheck. What's she to you? Well, presently, just a friend. Uh, formerly the best dental assistant I ever had. An extremely nice girl. Yeah, yes, I, uh, I saw her snapshot. A dental assistant, huh? Yeah, lovely, lovely girl. Um, I hated to lose her. But this baseball thing had been burning in her for a long time. Look, Diamond, just how much do you know about all this? Huh? I know that Lottie's missing. Maybe in trouble. Well, uh, I do need help, and perhaps I'd better tell you everything. I'm game. But I think I should warn you, the information I'm going to give you is dangerous. It may mean your life. Well, I'm uh, still game. Maybe not as much as a few seconds ago, but... Very well. A year or so ago, I had a patient, a man who called himself Dunn. George Dunn. And then you found out that Dunn wasn't Dunn at all. That he had very big feet and he was a racketeer named Grafton. Yes. You were very clever, Diamond. It was a gentle chart he wanted. He threatened me. I felt that if I ever gave it to him, he'd feel the necessity for uh, for killing me. So I gave the chart to Lottie to keep me here. It happened so fast, I barely had time to leave behind a chair. One second, the doctor and I were talking. The next, everything was bedlam and confusion. And blood and death and anger. My anger. The doctor had caught one smack between the eyes. And I got mad, shooting mad. I charged out of that office maybe ten seconds behind the killer, just in time to see him get into a car and melt away into the traffic. He headed east, then south, and east again, then stopped at a crummy-looking building and went in. And that's when smart, shrewd, clever private detective Diamond climbed a drain pipe, tore his pants, looked inside a second-floor window, saw a girl tied to a chair, and, like Lockenbar, broke in to rescue the fair second baseman in distress. Lottie? Look out! Oh, oh! this was getting monotonous. The billy caught me on the back of the neck, and while it didn't knock me out, it didn't make me feel like dancing either. 
The first thing I was aware of when I oriented myself to my new condition was the biggest pair of feet I'd ever seen. And the next thing I saw was the gabardine suit containing in its bright, clean folds the filthiest little murder artist I'd ever seen. So I made like a possum and pretended I was asleep. So, say, Grafton, I told you the shamus followed me. I want him. He's all yours, Joe, I promise, but later. Why later? Why wait? Because I gotta get that dental chart, that's why. Now that you've rubbed off the dentist and that goofy Billy the ball player, that chart's the only thing in the world that can prove Bigfoot Grafton's still alive. So why does that have to hold up Diamond's execution? Because maybe he knows where the dental chart's hid. I'm giving up on the dame here. She'd have told us long ago if she knew. If Diamond knows, he'll talk. Even if he don't know, he'll talk. And scream, too. Later, Joe. Now put that pig sticker back in your pocket. I don't hear you, Grafton. This diamond made me unhappy, and I don't like to wait. I said put that knife away, Joe. I still don't hear you. All right, Joe. I I knew this was the only chance I'd get. They were too busy showing each other their fangs to give me their undivided attention. And so the possum stopped playing possum and made a stab at playing tiger. The act started with a well-aimed kick to what the fight reporters call the midsection. (laughs) And the gabardine suit folded limply and sagged to the floor like it didn't even have a man inside it. And that's when Grafton pulled the gun, and that's when I made a grab for his knee. And you guessed it, there was a shot. And then there was a punch that made a mess out of a jawbone. And I'm happy to report that this time it wasn't mine. Oh, you're wonderful. What's your name? Well, honey, my name's Diamond. Diamond? Yes, dear, and believe me... A diamond is a girl's best friend. I hadn't anyone to was a lonely one Tell you I used to lie awake And wonder If there could be A someone In the white world Just made for me Now I see I had to save my love For you I never gave my love Till you And through my lonely heart Demanding it Cupid took a hand in it I hadn't any war Tell you. Mm. You're so romantic. Even with a black eye. Oh, thank you, dear. Oh, Ricky, darling, it must have been dreadful. Oh, it, uh, it had its moments, Helen. Yes, I saw that photograph. <laughs> the second baseman. What's the matter with the second baseman? Well, Ricky, if she were any good, wouldn't she be a first baseman? Honey, honey, I don't think you understand too much about baseball. Teach me. Oh, it takes years, baby, years. Well? Hmm? Well, uh, well, baseball's a game that's, uh, that's uh, divided into innings. Nine innings. Innings? What's an innings? Maybe I better teach you how to play post office. No, no, Ricky, please. Well, uh... Well, yeah, let's see. Now, an inning is a, a sort of a division, a, a stanza, a, a, a frame. Yeah, that's right, a frame. A frame? An inning's a frame? Oh, yeah, you're digging it. No, I'm not, Ricky, not really. Maybe we'd better forget it. All right, all right. An inning is a frame. That's right, dear. An inning is a frame. Hmm. Ricky, was she nice? Lottie? Mm-hmm. Well, I'll say this for her. She sure had a beautiful inning. Again, here's your Rexall family druggist. Don't wait until you're already suffering from acid stomach and then wish you had Bismarck's on hand. Buy a bottle tomorrow. 
This famous Rexall antacid often neutralizes excess acidity within one minute. More than that, Bismarex gives relief that's continuous and prolonged because its scientifically balanced ingredients work in sequence, easing gastric distress and leaving a soothing protective covering on irritated stomach membranes. Ask your Rexall druggist for Bismarex. He'll tell you you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Richard Diamond, Private Detective, stars Dick Powell in the title role and is written by Michael Camroy with music composed and conducted by Frank Worth. Featured in tonight's cast were Ted DeCorsia, Wilms Herbert, John Daner, Bill Conrad, Virginia Gregg, Gloria Blondell, and Sidney Miller. Richard Diamond, Private Detective, was transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. This is Bill Foreman inviting you to be with us next Wednesday at this time when we will again bring you Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Hiya, beautiful. Get lost, bristlepuss. You need a shave. But I have shaved. What else do you want me to do? Silly boy, she wants you to go stag. Go stag? But why? Because stag is Rexall's exclusive line of men's good grooming aids, like stag brushless shave cream. No fuss, no massage, just smooth it on and presto, you get a clean, close shave. Your face stays smooth and whiskerless all day long. I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll go stag. That's it. Join the stag line now at Rexall drugstores everywhere. Yes, to make girls care. Go stag.